Victor Chang, Case Interview Secrets, a former McKinsey interviewer reveals how to get multiple job offers in consulting. Delve into a world of skill building for case interviews and discover effective strategies to master calculations, estimations, and problem-solving techniques. Case Interview Secrets by Victor Chang examines the intricacies of the case interview processes at major consulting firms. This book summary provides valuable insights for tackling the rigorous interview process, with a focus on two types of quantitative questions, math questions and computational level estimates. Learn how to practice, improve your speed and confidence, use proxies in market sizing questions, and tackle general business questions using frameworks like the Profitability Framework and the Business Situation Framework. This summary offers a pathway to mastering case interviews and securing a job in the consulting industry. Mastering Consulting Interview Math when preparing for interviews at major consulting firms, you'll likely encounter case interviews that feature quantitative questions. These questions generally fall into two categories, math questions and computational level estimates. To excel in these questions, practicing regularly is crucial, even for those with impressive mathematical backgrounds. One effective approach is to review old interview questions from top firms to develop speed and automatize reasoning. Staying up to date with recent test materials is also essential to success, as question styles change over time. If you've ever had an interview at a top consulting firm, you know it involves more than discussing your qualifications. Instead, you'll face hands-on business cases, also known as case interviews, which often feature quantitative questions. These typically come in two forms, math questions and computational level estimates. Math questions usually involve arithmetic, percentage calculations, or data interpretation. For example, you may be asked about annual growth rates of a company's human capital to reach a specified innovation capital threshold. While these questions can be intimidating, the trick is to practice them frequently. Like a muscle, your brain needs constant exercise to perform at its best. Even candidates with strong mathematical backgrounds, like PhDs in physics or top college math scores, can falter in case interviews without sufficient practice. One effective method to enhance your speed and confidence is to practice old interview questions from firms like McKinsey or the Boston Consulting Group. By doing so, you'll automate your reasoning and respond to such questions more rapidly. However, remember that test questions evolve, and keeping current with the latest materials will help you stay ahead of the game. As you familiarize yourself with math questions in case interviews, don't forget to explore the second category, computational level estimates. In the end, dedication to practice and staying up to date with recent trends will greatly improve your chances of acing the case interview math. Mastering Mental Math A computational question involves estimating solutions using large numbers and precise arithmetic. To tackle these problems, Breaking down complex calculations into simpler components can yield faster and more accurate results. This method involves utilizing rounding and basic arithmetic to arrive at a close approximation to the correct answer, rather than trying to work with the exact numbers. By employing clever rounding and breaking down calculations into manageable parts, you can become adept at solving computational questions quickly and accurately. Computational questions challenge you to use given facts and make estimates by performing precise arithmetic with large numbers. Complex calculations might seem overwhelming at first, but breaking them down into smaller steps can make them more manageable and even enable you to do them in your head. For example, with a question involving a market of 3 million customers, a 15% market share, and $200 revenue per customer, you can first find the total market value by multiplying 3 million by $200. The result is $600 million. Then, divide that number by 10 and 2 to find 10% and 5%, respectively. Adding these parts together will give you the total revenue, $90 million. In many cases, precise numerical results aren't necessary, and you can arrive at suitable estimations by rounding numbers strategically. When faced with a question involving 42 million customers, 
12.7% market share, and the same $200 revenue per customer, start by rounding the numbers to make them more manageable. Instead of using 42 million, opt for 40 million, and round down the market share to 15%. This helps counterbalance the earlier rounding down of the number of customers. Using these rounded figures, you can quickly calculate a total revenue of $1.2 billion, which is a close approximation of the actual value, $1.07 billion. By implementing this approach, you're well on your way to mastering mental math for complex estimations. Estimating market size simplified. When faced with estimating the market size or sales of a product, focus on the approach by finding proxies, understanding their limits, and breaking down calculations during peak and off-peak times. The goal is not to get precise numbers but to create reasonable estimates through clear-cut calculations. Determining a product's market size can be tackled effortlessly with a structured approach. Begin by recognizing that tackling such questions is about understanding your strategy rather than achieving a flawless answer. The logical step is to identify proxies or factors that lead you towards the desired outcome. For instance, consider estimating the daily hamburger sales at an average drive through Proxies to calculate sales could include the daily number of cars visiting and the average number of burgers each vehicle orders. However, it is crucial to recognize the limitations of these proxies since they offer only rough estimates to guide predictions. Acknowledge imperfections like the difference between peak and off-peak hours, which affect sales. During peak hours, sales depend on the staff's ability to produce hamburgers. To quantify this, identify proxies like the number of counters and average time taken per order. However, for off-peak hours, calculations focus solely on the number of cars and the average burger order size. Take the following sample assumptions. A day includes four peak hours and eight off-peak hours. During peak hours, 100 cars visit per hour, while 30 cars visit per off-peak hour. The drive through has two counters, with each car taking an average of three minutes to order two burgers. Assuming each off-peak customer can be served within the shop's 40 car per hour capacity, calculate daily sales. For off-peak sales, 8 hours x 30 cars x 2 hamburgers per car equals 480 hamburgers daily. For peak hour sales, 40 cars x 2 hamburgers per car equals 320 hamburgers daily. Combine these values, and the total daily sales estimate equates to 800 hamburgers. By adopting this approach, you can create a reasonable market size estimation for various products. Mastering Consultant Interviews Case interviews for consultancy positions challenge candidates to make obscure estimations to simulate real-life client interactions. To excel, it's essential to understand the purpose behind the questions and approach them as if guiding a client. Be prepared for aggressive interviewers, mirroring the determination of real clients. Embody the role of a professional consultant, focusing on clarity and precision in responses, while maintaining a calm and confident demeanor. Remember, strong analytical skills and top-notch interpersonal skills go hand-in-hand in, hand in consultancy roles, and clients won't trust a nervous consultant. By treating the interviewer as a client and showcasing confidence, you'll increase your chances of acing the case interview and landing that consultancy job. Mastering Business Frameworks Business interviews may present general questions like, why am I losing money? Or, should we merge with this company? To tackle such questions, utilize frameworks like the Profitability in Business Situation Frameworks. The Profitability Framework involves breaking profit into components of revenue and cost, allowing you to analyze the problem quantitatively. For instance, you might find that high variable costs are the reason for decreasing profits. To understand the reasons behind these costs, use the Business Situation Framework, which focuses on customers, product, company, and competition. Applying this framework may reveal contributing factors like unnecessarily complex packaging designs that waste material and money. By using these frameworks, you can analyze both quantitative and qualitative aspects of business challenges effectively. Have
Having examined a wide range of practice techniques, calculations, estimations, and frameworks detailed in Victor Chang's Case Interview Secrets, you are now equipped to face the challenging world of case interviews in consulting firms. The book summary teaches you how to sharpen your skills in math and computational quantitative questions, utilize proxies, and apply critical frameworks such as profitability and the business situation ones. Remember, practice is key, and being able to approach quantitative problems with confidence and precision sets you up for a successful consulting career. Finally, keep in mind that treating your interviewer as a potential client and displaying excellent interpersonal skills are essential in securing the coveted job offers in the consulting world.